Hello, it's Dan Grelick, and we're going to be making music with code. And I'm going to be showing you a little bit more what's happening behind the scenes, since I get lots of questions on how this is all made. In a lot of my videos, I oftentimes have everything be really clean, and I have the code superimposed on top of the video, so you can't really see what's happening. Today, what we're going to do is actually have everything just here on the desktop. So we have this view here, and you can see the desktop, but also we have this view. And what you can see here is my whole setup. So we have my laptop here, and we have a MIDI controller. This lets me control some of the parameters for the music. I have all this other gear. Um, a lot of this is to help document, but all you really need is a computer. So let's get started. So since we're making music, I would recommend wearing a pair of headphones so that way you can hear a lot of the subtle differences and changes that happen as I'm making music. So I'm going to be putting my pair of headphones on right now. Great. Let's see what else is going on here. So right here, we have a text editor. I'm using Atom. And right here, we have Ableton running. And you can see it's recording my voice. Cool. What we also have running in the background is we have something called Super Collider. Super Collider is kind of the glue that's connecting my text editor, which is going to be sending signals to Super Collider. Super Collider then sends that to Ableton. So what is Tidal Cycles? Tidal Cycles is an open source, free to use software. It's a library built on top of Haskell. And you can run it on Windows, on Mac, and on Linux. I'm using a Mac here. You can go to tidalcycles.org um, and learn more here. I would definitely recommend checking it out if you're interested. You can see that I'm using Ableton as well. Ableton is a digital audio workstation, or a DAW, DAW, and you actually don't need to use Ableton in order to use title cycles. I just prefer to be using Ableton because you can do a lot more out of the box, and I've just been using it for um, a while now. Great, so let's get started. So I'm going to scroll down a little, and then let's type D1, which is the first channel. I'm going to write the note, which is C5, and let's say piano. and Title Cycles is running in a REPL. It's a read eval print loop, or a REPL. I'm going to highlight this block of code, or select anywhere within it, and hit Command Enter, and that will run the line of code. So let's see what happens. Great. So now we can hear a piano sound. And every time you hear the note, that's the beginning of a cycle. Let's play around with this a little bit. Let's say times two. Times four. And you can see every time it flashes, that's me evaluating the code. Maybe five, six. And we can also do functions like we can say fast too to, to make it go twice as fast. <laughs> slow it down. You can say slow two. And that's very slowly hitting the notes. So let's actually just change the notes. So let's say plus note. And we're going to go two. Let's go to five, seven. Let's have it. Let's use these angled brackets or little carrot brackets so that we can switch between these different notes. These numbers are the chromatic notes of a keyboard. Let's do this. Let's say fast four. So it's as if you're going up the keyboard. So I can write out a scale. Let's do a minor scale. Um, sometimes I forget. Cool. So that's picking the notes of the scale. So we just have a couple of these. Cool. And let's have another channel going. So I'm going to start on C4. We'll be a little bit lower. We'll say piano. And we'll run this. Say so the first time we'll do zero, and then we'll go to three, negative four, negative two. We'll do a little chord progression. Cool. Let's do this. I'm going to use these curly brackets, take away fast eight, and let's make these notes. So that's going to sound the same. 
So there's many ways to do the same thing in title cycles. So if we put 16, we can go to four. Let's go to eight. Let's do times two here as well. And it's fun. This is a musical effect called a hemiola. So let's add one more in here. So now we're distributing five notes over eight. Cool. Um, I just love that. Okay, so anyways. In here, I have my Ableton project set up. I'm gonna make this a little quieter. In session view, you can see all the different tracks. So we have piano going here. You can see the volumes going up and down. We have a, vo a vocal track. We'll have a sub octave bass. We'll have a synth and we'll have some drums. If we want to make electronic music, maybe first let's change these to synthesizer sounds. So let's go to change this to sub, make that quieter. So if you aren't wearing headphones already, this is a point where having headphones is helpful, helpful so you can hear some of the lower notes. Let's change this to synth. Maybe let's add some drums next. So let's do D3. And I'm going to use this function stack so that I can organize the code a little bit better. So I, I set a variable kick to be set at going to the kick drum or the bass drum. And let's run this line of code. Cool. And you can see the kick drum going there. Let's say fast two. Cool, we're kind of getting somewhere. I'm gonna use a function struct to be able to send more complex patterns into the drums. So let's run that. Maybe let's add um, some hi-hats. So let's go back to that. Let's say struct. 0101, zero, one, and then we'll go to hi-hat. Great. And you can see the different drums are being activated, or rather being played with MIDI notes from here. So let's say one times eight, one times four. Cool, let's go back to this. It's already getting pretty dancey. Um, let's do struct, zero, 01, let's add a snare drum. Cool. Actually, let's do this. Let's add a structure to the sub, and we're going to give it this kind of, this, this rhythm. So we'll go one, one, one. And something that Tidal Cycles has built into the language is being able to use Euclidean rhythms. If you don't know what that is, I'm not gonna get into it right now. If you do, it's very easy to use them. So let's do the same rhythm, but like this. Let's do five to prove that it's actually doing something. I'm gonna take the drums away so you can hear this. Make that louder. Let's go to three. Now let's bring in some vocals. Let's do one new track. Let's say Vox. And let's run that. Let's also manipulate the sample. Let's do the same scale. Let's do another channel now. We'll do Vox. And then let's say note one, or zero rather. And we're gonna use these brackets here to play a chord. A different chord. So there's a lot of there's a lot happening right now. So I'm gonna take out some things. Let's take the synths out. Let's say D4 silence. D2. You can also do it like this. And 
and let's have it so you can actually have nested um, carrot brackets so we're kind of creating this like decision tree for which notes will be played for each cycle so by nesting these we're gonna have it so the first time it's gonna go to the, the fifth semitone up and then the seventh so let's just run it cool all right so now I think I'm just gonna jam out a little bit I'll explain what's happening as I'm going, but at this point, I have a lot of the building blocks already running and that the code is typed out. So now I'm just going to try to create something that, I don't know, that sounds good. So let's do that. So let's run this code. Let's bring the synths back. Let's make them a little bit brighter. Let's make the vocals a little quieter. We'll change the decay time on the synths. They're a little sharper now versus not so sharp. Let's bring some delay in. We're using the delay effect here. Changing the, changing the time for the delay. Let's do a little breakdown section. Where do we want to go with this? Do a little bit more of the synths. Let's use struct. We're gonna say one five eight. Let's say fast two. And we're going to use the command off. What off does is it's gonna take a copy of this and then it's gonna offset it and play it at the same time. So it's gonna offset it by one half of the cycle. We're gonna say plus up note or plus note twelve. So you'll be able to hear it in three, two, one. Let's go two octaves. Let's shift between three and five. Before I do that, let's make the drums go faster. Let's quiet, let's slowly bring the bass back. structure for the vocals we'll say this and see if this works do that times two make the sense quieter make the make the bass just play steady notes Cool, we're getting somewhere. Bring the sense a little louder. Cool. So at this point, I'm thinking, how can we kind of close out the song? There's a lot going on. Slow the synths down, maybe, or slow the vo vocals down. Make the drums a little, give them a little less energy. We'll make the bass line just play the first note of the chord progression. 
We'll simplify the synths a little bit. Make the synths a little less bright. Make the drums go even slower. Get some delay the vocals. We'll bring in more some more effects. We'll make it we'll wash out the vocals a little bit more and the synths as well. this one here. Simplify the code. Nothing's precious. And then I'm going to go into Ableton and do this. Let's change this into a high pass filter. So first we'll go like this. And then we'll change it to a high pass filter. That wasn't very smooth. And we'll just wash out the sounds. Cool. So that's one of the ways that I make music. This is not the only way to do it. This is not the best way to do it. And especially for electronic music where there's so many different ways to make it. For me, I can actualize very complex ideas very quickly. And that's why I love using this tool. And the reason I want to share it with you all is because it's just so accessible. It's free to use. And I just want more people to be using it because then we can see what people make. So. I will say that if you're interested in learning more, you can go to titlecycles.org. There's some reference for references on how to use the language. There's documentation on how to install title cycles on Linux, Mac, Windows. And there's also a panel for community and where you can ask questions, things like that. This is definitely a good place to go that I would very much recommend. So that's that. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions, you can leave them in the comments. I'll get back to them as soon as I can. But I really look forward to seeing what more people do with this tool. It's such a beautiful gift to us all and it's open source and it's free. So yeah, have fun. <laughs>